morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I have a lot to talk about. Uh, the city finalized their budget for the fiscal year 2021. I got some pre-critic. I got a new dub and stuff. I got all sorts of things that are happening this week as well. Um, it was a dark and stormy Monday night uh, this week, but we have a lot of chill temperatures as we're going into the weekend. Um, it's starting to heat up once again, but we had that uh, cool, uh, that cool dip on Monday, which was a kind of a nice surprise just to kind of uh, upset the constant heat that we've been um, dealing with here in the city of Missoula. But let's talk about some news things that are happening within the city of Missoula. Last Friday, almost almost uh, maybe about uh, half an hour after my initial broadcast, big news happened at the Riverfront Triangle. Nick Jakota and Long Jam Presents pulled out of the $100 million hotel, which, which was originally supposed to be a conference center, a uh, major indoor venue for... Uh, thousands of people uh, with easy access to the stage has basically fell, fall, fallen through. Nick Chicota uh, says that he uh, wishes to concentrate on sustaining the already existing venues that they have, including Top Hat, Kettlehaus Amphitheater, uh, the Wilma as well. And so they're going to pull out right now. And so, yeah, I mean, there's a, just a lot going on. And uh, COVID has just been so hard on a lot of businesses throughout. And it seems very arbitrary to... Um, basically invest in a whole other business venture, especially something as big as a hotel, which would require mass, mass groups of people to gather. So moving on, we are also in the middle of fire season. Of course, you know, City of Missoula, uh, our fire that happened was out in Mount Sentinel a couple weeks ago. Uh, you can see the big black um, uh, um, sc uh, scar that's on Mount Sentinel as well. But one of the fires is in Jordan. Jordan Fire, uh, the city of Jordan was evacuated when the town became surrounded by a ring of fire. Uh, the fire spread east and south of Jordan, prompting the evacuation of Cohagen. Um, so far, uh, officials are hoping that the fire should slow and crews draw uh, to draw a line to prevent any further spread. Um, speaking of fires, the city did move forward during the Land Use and Planning Committee rezoning the Grand Creek area. And part of the concern of many of the public comments during this meeting was people were calling in saying, it was like, we're kind of bottlenecked here up in Grant Creek. Uh, if there's a fire, there's only one lane in and out. And with more people moving in there and with this rezoning that the city wants to do is they're going to impact with more people, um, which would mean more traffic. And it's already difficult to go to and from Grant Creek uh, during a lot of those hours as well. There's a small, narrow road, uh, no bike lanes, um, not much of a walkway. Uh, there are a couple of hiking trails up there, but you need to actually get there. But for the most part, Grant Creek... Uh, from the past years, they've had a fire, and it's very difficult to get out if there needs to be an evacuation. So that's one of the things that they talked about during the land use and planning um, meeting as well. Um, I'm going to talk more about city council later in the show to talk more about the budget and how the city reacted to a lot of public outcry to uh, not necessarily defund the police, but to reallocate funding for more social services to improve uh, the lives here in the citizens of Missoula. All right, uh, big news, vaccine. We might have a vaccine as uh, early as October or late October, but still. Uh, uh, Dr. An uh, Anthony Fauci, Director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, said in July that he is cautiously optimistic a vaccine could be ready by the end of the year and distributed by beginning of 2021. Of course, city CDC is urging public health officials in all 50 states and territories that uh, to get ready for vaccines um, by late October. Um, they are working on a vaccine right now. They're in phase three of trials. Uh, and so far with the vaccines that they do distribute it, they're going to have two different types of vaccines. Vaccine A, vaccine B, pretty aptly named. Um, but of course, so far, 60% uh, of Americans said they would take the vaccine, while 35% declined. Um, oh, whether you choose to take your medicine or not, here's a healthy dose of MCAT programming to get you through the weekend. Here is um, brand new programs. Um, if you have a disability to get a job. So what's going to happen in Uganda when um, there's much less resources and like assistive technology isn't around and you're going to have this huge glut of young people coming to the market. Um, so I said to Ambrose, well, the official numbers are saying that it's like 3%. Then I saw one that said 11 and um, he said, well, only three of his high school class went on to college. Um, 
and that there were fewer people that made it all, or few people that made it all the way through high school, and only 5% of the people in his college class are employed. <laughs> that goes forward and reverse at the same time. We're messing with time, folks, and it's Christopher Nolan's uh, not um, Batman movies where it gets a little weird. Um, if Christopher Nolan wanted to act so much in a movie, he should do it himself, but he'll basically direct a lot of people and the movie will move forward while you're just like, who's that guy? I don't remember his name. Anyways, oh look, people are going to reverse. Oh, there's a fight scene, choreography, cool. Uh, so this is basically what you're gonna expect this movie world. Uh, you see a well-dressed protagonist as he fights time itself in a movie that basically writes the rules on sports bloopers uh, gameplay. Um, Prince of Persia, eat your heart out, uh, because we're messing with time and fighting folks in reverse, so watch the right elbow from the hook that you missed the first time. Also, firing a gun is complicated because you have to be within the line of where the bullet was shot, because since you're going in reverse, it's a reverse bullet, and I guess the entry wound and exit wound have been reversed. I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird, but it's complicated, and I'm sure they'll spend most of this movie explaining it, because Christopher Nolan likes to over-explain things in movies, um, especially in Interstellar with the whole wormhole, bend the paper, uh, put the pencil in, that kind of thing. But anyways, um, uh, time is controlled, and this movie ain't uh, clock stoppers, that's all I gotta say. Um, this up, this next movie is a Charlie Kaufman movie. If you remember Charlie Kaufman, he did uh, such movies as uh, Being John Malkovich, uh, Animalisa, uh, Syncopy, Syncopy or something, um, and then also uh, Adaptation. I'm, like the reason why I know this is I, I took a media arts class, and in media arts you're supposed to watch a uh, Charlie Kaufman movie because of I guess the screenplay is really well done, but. Um, the movie's called I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Is this a cry for help from Charlie Kaufman? Or maybe it's just uh, uh, basically telling us that um, <laughs> the sadness that people feel is comical. I've seen this a couple of movies. It's like people going through miserable misery, but also it's kind of funny. It, it's weird. It's kind of like one of those movies that um, you're supposed to watch in a media class, and the teacher's just like, what? and you're like, well, why are we watching this? Because it's art. You just don't get it. So that, that's the kind of movie you can expect from this movie. Okay, so here's the plot. A uh, woman and her fiancé, hu husband or whatever, go visit their parents uh, for the holidays, and things get weird. And I think I remember the, uh, the, the video was just like, wait a minute, these aren't your parents, these are my parents. I'm like, oh, I kind of see what's going on. And maybe she has a split personality, and she doesn't really have a husband, and that's kind of like the perspective of that. But that's, I'm reading too much into it. And that's basically the movie. I'm thinking of ending things. Moving on, Fall Guys. We're talking about some video games now. This is a game that's gaining a lot of popularity because people like platformers, but they want to uh, challenge other people to a platformer where they can uh, basically uh, mess up and run around. It's There's a lot of games like this out there. Um, Fortnite is a prime example. is a first-person shooter where you're versing a bunch of people in the Battle Royale. This is more just like a, a race platformer uh, Battle Royale. And, you know, everyone likes Battle Royales, and with online being as good as it is, they're making this Fall Guys. So, Fall Guys is basically like falling in line, sheeple. <laughs> I can't believe I wrote that. You have no will of your own, only to know how to game and why not. Um, you've been stuck inside for quite some time, gotten used to it, and now you can watch up and play a bunch of colorful characters that will make you open your wallet and give more customizing options for your little gamer, gamer avatar uh, to be the belle of the ball. How can you go wrong if you were never right to begin with? Oh, I didn't even talk about the boys. Um, 
Boys. I'll throw that up right now. The Boys. It's a, a kind of a, a dark take on um, DC uh, Marvel superheroes if they were run by Disney. But more blatantly run by Disney rather than, you know, just uh, shifty behind the scene. Hmm. Okay, where am I going with this? Oh, wait, The Boys, season two. Season one was basically about a young guy whose girlfriend dies at the hands of a superhero. Not on purpose, it was an accident, so this accident turns into rage for him to get revenge on the superheroes, but, you know, you're a human trying to take on the superhero. Good luck. So that's kind of like the premise of this, so they're kind of good guys, but they're not really good guys. They're all jerks, and then the good guys, they think they're good guys, are bad guys, and then they're morally corruptible through corporate sponsors and movies and stuff like that. Anyways, this is one of those mini shows that are being sponsored by Seth Rogen, so... If you see Seth Rogen in these uh, shows, you know uh, he's producing it. So, anyways, The Boys Season 2 comes out this weekend. I'm pretty sure it's going to uh, uh, be a little bit more Americanized and militarized because the last season ended with uh, uh, the superheroes getting a military contract so they can basically police the world. So you got superheroes policing the world. Hmm. There. There you go. Season 2, The Boys. All right, so that, I kind of made that last one up at the last minute, but... Hey, I make this up as I go, so without further ado, here is a brand new dub and stuff, and it is called, I can't believe, I, uh, Whistle Stop. Hello? Anybody home? Hello? Oh. Uh, see, she hasn't redecorated in years. I'm over here, honey. Come on in. Now don't you judge my decorating scheme. Hello? Oh! Long time no see! <laughs> Look at you! <laughs> yes, I'm quite beautiful. After all, there are no mirrors on the train. Well, turn off the light and kiss me pretty. It's... Are you listen. Well, yes, it is a fur. I'll report to Peter later, so let's sit down. <laughs> I got a couple questions I just have to have answered. But first, we're gonna have some tea. Are you ready for my questions? I'm kind of tired. Tired? Tired from sitting on the train all day? And well, yes, a long day of not doing anything makes you even more tired and restless. Uh, I think I might just turn in. Oh, uh, well, you know, whatever. Well, once I've rested a few hours, I'll be more than happy. No, I get it. I, I understand that you are having some lady oh, problems. Well, well, no, that's not... That's... Well, um... <laughs> well, no more than other women. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, I'm just concerned you're not living up to your potential. I'm just saying that you should no, start No, 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 having... don't you tell me how to live my life. Well, I heard from Jessica that she can't have well, kids. Well, we're not talking about Jessica. Man, I pray if your mom was alive today, <laughs> she'd be dying of shame. God only knows. Well, your mom was a terrible person. Well, I guess that's settled. We'll talk more about that later, but let me talk more about my grandkids. And so, this movie, it's huge. It's these two women who are basically inside the room, and they're just talking back and just forth. play your cards. On and on and on and on and on and on. What kind of cards do you got? Well, I'm not supposed to tell you what my cards are. That's not how the game works. We've been playing all night. It's taking forever just to deal out and see who wins, see who lost all this money. Okay, can I continue with my story? All right, so... The two women, they find out that they have more in common than they think they originally did, which... Now you listen here, you shut your mouth. Okay, okay, I'll stop. Hmm. Why does it sound like I've seen that movie before? Well, no, it's not quite like a lot of the other movies. It's just... <sighs> listen, you're not I don't get really it. paying attention to the story. It's just another... Freddy Chop! Looks like I won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure know how to play a card game you made up. Yo, so I was wondering, uh, what did you think? I didn't really think much of it. It was really stupid and repetitive. Huh, you're just jealous because you didn't think of it yourself. <laughs> Don't run that mouth of yours. Well, I'm just saying is that usually people who are uh, very critical are the most jealous. Why you gotta go there? I'm just saying, you know, we're just playing a friendly game. This game ain't friendly. I'm just trying to pitch my idea to you guys. Listen, this movie's gonna be big. A lot more women are gonna show up paying tickets to buy this thing. You see? Huh. Ugh. What? No what one's gonna want to see that Come movie. Come on, we just have to shop around let you a couple make studios. It you get out of here. Pick it up? No. You listen here. Those are the most basic of the basic plot lines of any chick flick. Okay, okay. 
uh, have some more alcohol. Maybe you'll, um, <laughs> maybe you'll be more inclined to listen. Drink responsibly. <laughs> uh. Welcome back. We're talking about the budget of the city of Missoula. And one of the biggest budget items is that the city threw in about $114,000 to mo to a mobile crisis unit. And they got a matching grant to help increase the funding for a mobile crisis unit. And this is uh, going to be uh, operated and trained through the Missoula Fire Department. Here is Fire Chief uh, Brad Davis on the Mobile Crisis Center. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to let council know that we were successful in being awarded the RFP from Missoula County to provide a mobile crisis response team for Missoula and the surrounding area. Um, I was hoping to fast track and have a rough draft at least or a draft contract um, available for tonight, but that did not happen um, under the timeline. It's understandable. So um, I did change my referral um, it's just a, basically a general update to let everyone know that we were awarded that opportunity and that I wanted to get council's blessing um, and, their, and the city's, um, basically the city's blessing and to move forward with that process with the intent to enter into an agreement with the county and also with Partnership Health Center as a subcontractor to provide mobile response for Missoula. City Council Member Stacy Anderson response. Uh, we've been talking a lot in our community about the need for mobile crisis and the CJCC um, has made their determination on who the grant awardee will be and it's the Missoula Fire Department and partnership with Partnership Health and um, I'm really excited to see them take this up. I know that um, Assistant Chief Brad Davis has a lot of passion for this and will work really hard to meet the needs of so many in our community. And I look forward to having um, AC Davis as well as the folks from Partnership in a public safety and health meeting later this year to update us on the work that they're doing. So thanks so much. Like I said, uh, the city of Missoula dropped over $100,000 on this crisis unit with matching funds to be added to the $380,000 grant received by the Montana Department of Health and Human Services uh, QPR training. I just want to talk a little bit more about this. And, you know, we have the mental health mobile crisis. A lot of people who have mental health crises uh, tend to be suicidal and they need to be talked down. And seeing a lot of the signs even beforehand in terms of prevention training is QPR, which stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer. And this is uh, something that's done through the Missoula City County Health Department, um, you know, looking for signs of suicide. A lot of people with mental health issues also have a higher risk of suicide as well because a lot of times you don't know how to help them. And so a lot of times with QPR training, you're able to look into it a little bit further. And this is something that you can do at home uh, as well uh, from anywhere, just as good as CPR training, which is why they are put it into QPR training to kind of a, a run-on um, program as well. Um, this overall uh, would give more training to firefighters to respond to mental health emergencies, and that's one of the biggest things that the uh, city of Missoula uh, uh, put down in terms of the budget. Um, one of the biggest things is that the, the, a lot of citizens in Missoula um, were calling in, giving a bunch of public comments, saying that the city of Missoula's police department should not be as funded as they are. It's a lot of money that's being given to the city of police department. Um, a lot of the city council members are very supportive of the police department and Chief White, who became the new chief during this pandemic, during everything that's been going on here as well. Um, but of course, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, fiscal year 2021 budget. But before we start, um, the city uh, did um, listen and they did defund certain um, I, uh, properties of the funding, which included $77,000 of uh, overtime that would have been provided to the uh, police department if they were to take additional training for you know sen sen sensitivity training, uh, looking in more into system systemic racism within the police department nationally. But they want to say that they should do this um, and they shouldn't be uh, incentivized to do these trainings as well. So that's the reason why they took out $77,000. 
Anyways, public comment, continue to talk more about defunding the police, and here are some of the comments in, um, in this. Uh, Matt Larson talking about the amendment to denying an, an additional officer being approved for the Business Improvement District. Um, I'm talking about a lot of different things happening there as well, but Business Improvement District got a grant to award a new police officer, which would be downtown, uh, which would add to the single officer, which is known as Officer Randy, and he would be number two, or she. And this is what Matt Larson had to say. This is a this is a really sad and kind of um, somber day here. It's really uh, really rainy and overcast, and that's kind of like what our next year is going to look like here, I, as far as I can tell. Um, you guys aren't allocating even a drop into this bucket that we've so vigorously and so tirelessly asked you to do. You're spending less on it than you spent to sweep the streets downtown. And I think that speaks to your priorities and it speaks to you as a group, as a whole. You need to divide this question. You need to fund the mental health unit and you need to reevaluate and get a majority consensus to send this budget, which is extremely flawed and not representative of our community back to committee. This amendment is just another example of that. It's despicable. Um, but it's sadly to become expected by this council. But like I said before, this would be a grant um, provided for the, the downtown business improvement district. Um, Murder Becerra from the city intended uh, that the city should not accept this officer for the BID. Uh, Andy Housel talks about homeless folks and their interactions with officers. What we actually need is not one really great guy who just seems to do it outside of the norm of policing. What we need is a professional to be downtown interfacing with people who are, as Laurel said, surviving in public. Not only with the kind of compassion that Randy seems to bring to his job, but also with the professional skill set. And with one other major difference, that is that person would not be an armed police officer. So public comments, um, I don't want to go do too much into public comments because they've been saying a lot of the same things for a lot of the same um, reasons, more social services, less police force, and more social services to help folks who are in need and are going through some tough times and they don't need uh, uh, someone who kind of commands the room, but somebody who helps uh, helps people with that as well. So Atisi Romero, uh, she's spoken many times in the city of Missoula, and this is how she had to respond to the budget. The current 2021 proposed city budget is devoid of exceptionalism, vision, imagination, and courage. What of a resilient, caring community speaks to you loud and clear within the, spend, within the spending budget lines? What of looking after one another speaks volumes within your complacent weekly okays and yeses too? What of the working people having a right to live in the city that they toil in is spelled loud and clear in your presented drab, corrupt budget? What are the homeless folk and families having a safe place to sleep at night makes a blimp in those numbed, desensitized hearts of yours? So, Ms. Romero, um, as you may remember from last year, or actually maybe the year before, is that she was a big proponent in gathering a bunch of people to help homeless folks during the winter months and to provide a winter warming shelter for those who could not stay at the POV. And so Salvation Army decided to open their doors. And for the first year, it was very rough. And then the second year, the, the POV took, lead, took heed and decided to uh, organize everything and take, do that as well. But it was kind of her and many other people who were concerned about people freezing to death uh, during uh, the winter months in Mon Missoula. Um, so that was one of the things that she was known for as well. Um, the city did not discuss uh, um, this after the fact, um, and they voted just to uh, approve the additional officer for the downtown Missoula area. Um, and this is uh, City Council me uh, member uh, Heather Harp uh, talks about this. Chief White advocates for many system improvements in this year's budget, as reflected. 
I wouldn't be surprised if there are others left on the cutting room floor. These are intended to lift morale, thereby improving the chances of better community policing. However, I suspect he also recognizes that all the training in the world will still fall on some deaf ears. An effective executive calls the underperformers no matter the organization, and I encourage Chief White to do the same. This is the type of accountability I believe the vast majority of Missoulians need to lift their morale. You matter. We all matter. Thank you. Heather Harp has been an advocate for the Missoula, Citi Missoula Citizen Academy. For uh, These is a program for folks to get involved with the city and see how it works and to educate themselves and how the police work with uh, homeless folks within the city of Missoula. And this is a great program for people to actually get involved with. And um, there's, there's always a lot of programs in place to volunteer and get involved with and kind of see what, what is happening on the other side of the uh, city council table or the other side of the screen since we're all in Zoom meetings. And that's just something to really think about is the Missoula Citizens Academy and this is a great way for a lot of people to kind of educate themselves about how the city works and, uh, you know, like with uh, like the, the money that goes into there and where it goes and how to find more information within the city. Um, of course, to avoid any public comment, um, there's a lot of repeating public comment on this, many citizens in Missoula are concerned about the budget moving forward. And here is Sam Coop. We also live in a nation where people are communicating more fluidly and where we are responsible and responsive to the national narrative. And that is something that we can make our own statement as a city on through how we use our money. And I know the police budget's been signal, uh, singled out as like this, you know, piece of the larger pie here. And that's where a lot of the debate is. And it's because it's the biggest opportunity we have to weigh in as a community. And it's something that I, you know, just to reiterate previous callers, think should be held as the rest of the budget passes. There's some really good stuff, just to say it, in the rest of the budget. I'm absolutely excited about the electric trucks for the Parks Department, for example, uh, and the other collaborations that are going on there. Um, but when it comes to this increase in police funding, and we're not, you know, defunding police is not on the table in Missoula. That's not even what we're talking about. We're just talking about giving more money or staying the same, essentially. Um, it seems like one of the least representative moves the council could make to increase police funding. And I would really encourage people watching this meeting to take note of how your council members vote on this thing and where you would weigh in. Thank you. Jones re responds by talking about Missoula's police and how they have served Missoula in the long run. I'm sure that many people think we're not doing enough, but my approach is I think we need to have strong incremental change, which is going to, it, we need to have a, how should I put it, a good foundation that we're doing, going in new directions on so that we will have solid results that will help us sift through the decisions of how to fund it in the long run, how to make it sustainable, how to make it impactful. And that Of course, uh, the city has uh, started doing a new program called um, Learn Missoula, and this is to look uh, further into systemic, uh, systematic, systemic racism within the police force, within the city of Missoula, how Missoula has been underserving BIPOC community. Um, this is supposed to, to listen, engage, action, reflection, and network, um, is working with the Missoula City Council to get approval of a 12-week action plan that will include research, training, and interviewing to get better understanding of what black, indigenous, and people of color BIPOC community ex is, is actually experiencing. Um, majority of class cash flow for the police are going towards a collective bargaining agreement. So part of that big thing is that uh, every three years, the city and the, uh, city, Missoula, the city of Missoula Police Department come together and work on a collective bargaining agreement. And this is basically the police union within the city of Missoula meeting with the city of Missoula and being like, hey, we haven't gotten any raises or anything in the last three years. This is what we're asking for, for better pay for the officers that are on duty and stuff like that. And it's basically raises for the most part, and that's a big percentage of it, and also pensions for retired officers. And that was a lot of the big bump with the big money. Um, there's a lot of line items that were approved. Um, they finalized the budget last Wednesday, um, not this week's Wednesday because they had the meeting on Monday, but that was the finalization of it. There were a lot of people commenting, just like, you weren't as transparent as you should have been, but the budget is constantly changing and fluctuating and um, 
updating, and they also have a link on the city's website for more information about the budget as well, uh, where the money's going. So you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us to find out the budget and more. But one of the biggest things is uh, these are a lot of the new programs that got put into place. Uh, Learn Missoula, the Mobile Crisis Center, uh, not sunny, funding some requests like overtime for additional training, um, and also the Housing Community Trust, and this is for uh, not only providing affordable housing for folks, but sustaining that affordable housing through the Community Trust. And it was an ordinance that passed that would have to take a lot of votes from uh, city council members in the future to uh, get rid of this trust. So they put money away to help sustain affordable housing in the city of Missoula. So a lot of good things and some new changes that we'll be able to see how these investments reflect our ever-growing town. Uh, but like I said, for more information, you go to ci.missoula.mt.us for all that information and more. Uh, without further ado, here is the latest update from the City County Health Department on what's going on with uh, COVID-19. So here is Cindy Farr, or an official from the City County Health Department. We've had 439 cumulative positive cases in Missoula County to date. That's up four cases since yesterday. We've had 396 recoveries and three deaths. Two Missoula County residents are hospitalized in Missoula County. We have 40 active COVID-19 cases with 188 close contacts. Those active cases and their close contacts remain in quarantine and isolation and are being monitored and supported as needed. The state of Montana is reporting 7,691 cumulative COVID cases, which is up 183 new cases from yesterday. There are now 1,998 active cases with 150 active hospitalizations across the state. And there have been 109 deaths related to COVID-19 statewide. First, I want to let you know that we're going to move from doing multiple briefings per week to doing a regular briefing on Wednesdays each week. And then if something comes up in between our regular briefings, we'll do an additional briefing to cover the relevant topics. Um, in between those briefings, you can find the most current numbers on our website at missoula.co slash cvirus that gets updated every day and also on our Missoula City County Health, Health Department's Facebook page. Cases in Missoula County are coming in at a pretty steady rate and they're no longer increasing at this time. Our active COVID case rate per 100,000 people is currently at 37, while the state of Montana as a whole is seeing 183 cases per 100,000 people. So that's pretty good. Our reproductive value in Missoula County is holding below one, which means that less than one person becomes infected by a person who has COVID-19. That means that we're able to isolate and quarantine people very quickly, and that's helping us to reduce the spread. One big change that we've seen in the past week or so is related to the number of contacts a person has. In the past, the 20 to 29 year olds who tested positive for COVID-19 had significantly more contacts than those in other age ranges. Now what we're seeing is that people who are in their 30s are actually having significantly higher number of contacts. So why do we care about this? One of the factors that we regularly look at is our capacity to do contact tracing and monitoring. Right now we are good and we have the, the capacity um, that we need to do that in a timely manner, but that means that we need everyone to limit your social circles as much as possible so that we can continue um, to have that capacity. On that note, we know that Labor Day weekend is usually the last big weekend of summer and we're really used to being able to spend it with our friends and family and having get togethers to celebrate the end of summer and the beginning of, beginning of fall. It's important that as we head towards Labor Day weekend, we continue to be vigilant and practice prevention measures so that we don't see a big uptick in cases a couple of weeks after Labor Day like we did after the 4th of July. So it's just really important to keep your interactions to smaller group of people, practice social distancing whenever possible, wear face covering, wash your hands frequently. And if you're having any symptoms of COVID-19, do not interact with people and call 258-INFO to schedule yourself a test. So thanks for everything that you are doing out there to help keep our numbers low. And that's it for my daily briefing today. Um, as always, you can subscribe to us on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Um, click that notification bell so that you get notified when additional videos are uploaded. You can follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department's Facebook page. Check out our website at missoula.co slash cvirus. And you can call 258-INFO if you have general questions about COVID-19 or if you would like to schedule a test through our free drive through testing clinic. So until next week, everybody stay healthy.
here's some MCAT news for you folks out there. Um, more and more stuff are happening. MCAT's going to be uh, covering some more sports this season as well as MCPS and MCAT are working towards figuring out how we're live streaming and how we're doing that. Uh, but for the most part, I just got to say that as pretty much the coordinator for all the MCPS sports stuff for MCAT, I am guaranteeing that um, there are not, many, not going to be too many live stream sports. Um, we're going to be trying to limit a lot of those uh, interactions with uh, our staff, but also providing a chance for a lot of people to uh, see the finished video online as well. So if you um, are interested, or you'll probably start seeing um, posts. It's going to be posted on our Facebook page and our YouTube page for those of you who are interested in seeing sports on MCAT as well. Um, um, and that's kind of like where we're going right now. There are not going to be too many options for live streaming. They're just going to be a repeated broadcast later on. We'll try to upload it to our YouTube and Facebook as soon as possible, hopefully that night or maybe the day after. But for uh, that kind of news, I wanted to limit uh, the major production kind of value that we used to do in the past just because of the way that the city, the, um, the, the, the way that society is now. Um, that's just something I wanted to mention as well that we're going to be doing more sports as well So we're going to be covering more events, but at the same time the there's going to be a delay on when the sports will be available for you to view at home, so that's that um, Another big thing is that MCAT has started moving into our new location at the Pu Missoula Public Library's new building, which is off Main Street, Main and Friend Street. You really can't miss it. Um, it's a new, beautiful building. Um, there's a lot of cool things. Uh, I'm really excited about it for sure. We moved in a bunch of stuff. We moved in a bunch of our tripods and new cameras that we're going to be checking out to the public as well. Um, the official library won't be open until October, so that's the big news with MCAT, is that we won't necessarily be open until October. Um, this month is all about moving in, and of course we've had a lot of people ask, is like, hey, we're willing to help move in, and if you are willing to help MCAT move in or anything like that, you can um, email us, mcat at mcat.org. Um, you can call us, I believe it's 542-6228 still, but email us might be the best part for mcat at mcat.org, maybe with the subject to be like, help MCAT move, and then we can help, we, you can help us move later on, but for right now, we're at the hard hat, vest wearing um, phase of our move-in, so we still have to wear hard hats um, while we go into the building, and we don't have enough of that to provide for additional members in our MCAT family to help us move in. So we're kind of uh, nitpicking and doing it single person by single person. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, we are going to be doing a lot more uh, kind of like live stream type stuff, um, especially when it comes to a lot of like the city of Missoula um, community meetings. Um, county commissioners, um, they're doing a lot of Zoom stuff, so what we're doing has been basically broadcasting a lot of their Zoom meetings that we get invited to. Um, but for the most part, we're not doing too many in terms of going out to location doing live streams. The one thing that we are doing is the Zach sessions, and there's Zach social distancing sessions that are going to be continuing on Saturdays at 7.30 throughout the next couple Saturdays. I believe they're doing a kind of a cabaret type show on Saturday. This is kind of like a musical best of um, for a lot of folks performing. So there's going to be like, I think, 14, 15 performers um, at the Zach. Um, and they're trying to social distance, so you can find it online on the Zach's uh, Facebook page and YouTube. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it for a lot of the announcements that are happening with an MCAT. Um, I'll let you guys know more if there's any m new information about it. But... I just want to thank you guys for joining me on um, Wake Up Missoula. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Take care, people.